Please be attentive. Chair recognizes the representative of LaBlanche for unanimous consent. Mr. Speaker, honorable colleagues, I would like to be clear before I start my speech. My speech is not intended to be political, but to speak my truth and what I witnessed and to share the information with this House and the people of the state. I believe in truth and democracy are important to our government and every aspect of our electoral system, including political parties. I am simply a whistleblower in sharing my truth. I come before you today as an independent member of this House to explain why I left the Democratic Party. Mr. The Democratic Speaker, I object. Member, had, member has withdrawn consent. The question is, shall the member be allowed to continue? All those in favor say aye. Aye! Those in This will be a division vote. Members, take your seats. This is a division vote. Division. Close the door. Mr. Speaker, I request a roll call vote. The House will be in order. Mr. Speaker. This is going to be a division vote on whether the member will continue to speak or not. Mr. Speaker. A roll call has been requested. I see the hands up, so I would assume that is sufficiently seconded. Mr. Speaker, Representative Lang back there in C3. I just ask that you give us a couple minutes. Some members turned in their clickers and they're retrieving them. They were in the room at the time it started, but they need to get their clickers, so I'd give a minute or two. The clerk was very pacific in saying that we're going to have a vote coming up, and if they put them down, then too bad. This is a roll call vote on whether the member can continue or not. This is a roll call vote on whether the member can continue speaking. If you're in favor, you'll press the green button. If you're opposed, you'll press the red button. Voting stations are open for 30 seconds. At Representatives Abbas, Abbott, Alexander, Bailey, Baldessaro, Bollier, Uras, Fords, Bouchard, Burroughs, Calipitz, Kaplan, Chase, Cretien, Cohen, Comtois, Col Conley, Crawford, Cross, Fadolfi, Fellows, Fenton, Fontenau, Goley, Gallagher, Gamarlo, Gorg, Harb, Harley, Harrington, Infantine, Judy, Johnson, Knurk, Ladd, Lundgren, Luno, McKay, Mackey, Mann, McAleer, Macbeth, McLean, McWilliams, Merchant, Muse, Muirhead, Murphy, Pimentel, Rung, Sandler, Schamber, Shapiro, Janice Schmidt, Suzanne Smith, 
Timothy Smith, Sophocles, Sumsich, Sylvia, The Burge, Toll, Tucker, Vail, Van, Von Plinsky, Wazir, Welkowitz, Weston, Harvey Bullia, and Levitz. If all members present had an opportunity to vote, House will tend to stay to the vote. Hundred ninety-nine voting yay, seventy voting nay. The member may continue. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I was told to speak uh, a little bit quieter and to adjust the microphone. Uh, I hope everybody can hear me. I come before you today as an independent member of this House to explain why I left the Democratic Party. The Democratic Party, ironically, is the least democratic institution I have ever been a member of. For context, I served as a member of the New Hampshire Democratic Party's State Committee since 2020, and obviously as a Democratic member of this House. Yet I observed as a leader within this party is a party that does not follow the ideals of democracy or follow its own constitution. The NHDP constitution states that the state committee shall govern the party between state conventions. Chapter 3 of the New Hampshire Democratic Party's constitution states the purpose of the state committee, and I'm quoting this, it is the responsibility of the members of the Democratic State Committee to participate actively in formulating policy, conducting business, and maintaining the financial stability of the state party as necessary or appropriate to carry out the goals of the NHDP. Yet, as a former member of the State Committee, I can tell you that this was never followed through on. There was no opportunity for input or discussion at any of the State Committee meetings I ever attended. Similarly, Chapter 2, Section B states that the NHDP conventions shall adopt the platform of the NHDP, nominate presidential electors, vote on amendments to the Constitution of the Democratic Party, promote party unity, and carry out the actions necessary to further the goals of the NHDP. This means that the convention is the ultimate decision-making body of the party. Every single Democratic member of this House is automatically a delegate to this convention. As all the Democratic members of this chamber should recall, Last year's convention, we were tasked with voting on an amendment to the party's constitution that included 56, that is five, six, 56 alterations to the constitution. Yet the same thing occurred. No delegate was allowed to voice their opinion and debate this important change to the party's governing document at the convention. To make things worse, the NHDP office refused to provide the contact information uh, of any state committee member or convention delegate to any state committee or convention delegate. Think of it like this. Imagine the New Hampshire House, except we are not allowed to speak and debate on the House floor, and we are not allowed to talk to one another outside of the House. That is the sad reality of the New Hampshire Democratic Party. To continue with this theme of undemocratic practices, it seems that the chairman of the Democratic Party leads his party with an iron fist. As a member of the State Committee, we are tasked with electing the officers of the party. Last year, we had such an election. In that election, I endorsed and voted for the chairman's opponent. This seems to have gotten me on what I affectionately call his blacklist. Last year, shortly after the officer election, I was running for a seat on my local school board. In that campaign, I faced unprecedented hatred. From threats of violence, to trespassing, to destruction of property, I was going through a lot, to say the least. One such incident was where one of my supporters' pride flags was burnt after putting, their, uh, after putting my campaign sign on their property, which was also destroyed that very same night. 
Although I voted against Ray Buckley, I still respected him and thought he, I could count on him as the leader of the party. So I texted him for help with this situation, for help and advice. He responded, I'm busy, send me an email. So I did. I also sent the very same email to the New Hampshire Democratic Party's office. We're coming up on a year since I sent that email and I have yet to hear back from the party. The New Hampshire Democratic Party says that it stands for minority groups such as the LGBTQ plus community. Yet when I, as the youngest openly gay legislator in this country, in the history of the United States, reached out for help, I was ignored. These are just a few of the reasons of why I left the Democratic Party. Now the reason I chose to spoke here before you today is to educate the Democratic members of this House on the issues facing their party and to inform the public of the hypocrisy of the so-called Democratic Party of New Hampshire. If you are a Democratic member of this House and you have seen what I have seen and agree that the way this party is run is not right, I encourage you to take a stand and leave the party, as I have, until it fixes its major flaws. When I took my oath of office, I did not take it to a political party, but to our United States Constitution and our New Hampshire Constitution. And most importantly, I was elected to do what is right for my constituents of Amherst. I want to be very clear. This has nothing to do with the leadership of the Democratic Caucus and everything to do with the leadership of the New Hampshire Democratic Party. Thank you, colleagues, for listening to me today. Thank you. Mr. Mr. Speaker. Representative Osborne moved the House stand in recess for the purpose of introduction of bills, enrolled bill amendments, and enrolled bill reports. Mr. Speaker, and Mr. Messages. Speaker. Are you, are you ready for the question? All those no, in favor no, say aye. No. Those